dig this shirt. This one goes out to my bros and brews. Hopefully this could be a discussion for us. Because Adam brought up the fig tree. And, and the Galileans, but I don't know if that was entirely connected, but I, I guess it is. Maybe in ways that I don't even know. There's lots of mention of the fig tree. Even Jesus says the parallel fig tree, like Matthew 24, says when you see the leaves on the fig tree, I guess this is my question, you see the leaves on the fig tree, he's saying, you'll know his return is near. Summer is coming, you know, the idea of what, what happens in summer, or late summer even. We get the fall feasts, so a lot of us understand that. Okay, the, we get the spring feasts, kind of already been fulfilled by Jesus. Passover, Passover lamb, picture the Passover lamb. He was our first fruits, he's the first to rise, the first to be given his glorified body. Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is what Passover was part of, is he is the unleavened bread. He's without sin. Right? It's all pictures of those. Um, Pentecost, or as the Hebrews would have called it Shavuot, and they didn't know that's why they were gathered. It's like why there's so many people from so many different cultures all hanging around in Jerusalem as a pilgrim feast. People from all over would come. You know, even Paul. You remember Paul was from Know, Galatia area, like in Turkey. So you're traveling quite a distance to hang out for a pilgrim feast. It's a commanded feast that you would go and you would celebrate. Uh, and uh, the spirit was poured out at that time. So another thing he promised, another thing he fulfilled. Then we get to you know these fall feasts. First one is day of blasting, day of trumpets. Jews call it Rosh Hashanah, so it's their new year, uh, which makes sense for a lot of reasons. That's a little more in depth that I want to get to because I don't want to lose the fig tree example here. And again, like I don't have anything figured out, but I'm just making some points here. Um, so, day of trumpets, we think, oh, it's the day of the Lord. And it's one of the only feast days. We don't really know why it's celebrated. It doesn't really have any historical uh, event tied to it. It's like they think it's prophetic. Trumpets would be blown when a king would come to a city. So it would be a coronation of our king. He's, he's, you know, and a lot of people say Jesus is king. But he's not. He's not yet. Even him, when he's before Pilate, says his kingdom is not of this world. But his kingdom is the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven. That's his kingdom. So once he sets up his kingdom, sets down on earth, then he'll be king. He's high priest right now filling that role in the heavenly temple, but that's another segue, for sure. We can argue about that one. So he will come, he'll be, day of the Lord is destruction, Ben loves that, it's all about you know, the day of wrath, pours out his wrath amongst the nations, it doesn't kill everybody, right? It's the real baddies, because there's still nations that are going to come to Jerusalem to celebrate these feasts we're talking about. One of those feasts, mentioned Zechariah 14, is... Tabernacles or Sukkot is the, the third pilgrim feast. And that one, well, we're skipping one because Yom Teruah is another one. And we could say it's partially fulfilled, and that's a lot of people look to Yom Kippur, or not, uh, yeah, Day of Atonement is Yom Kippur, not uh, Teruah. I still had trumpets on the brain. And trumpets sets off the 10 days of awe, which is kind of a 10 days of reflection um, before the Day of Atonement. So that's why a lot of people think the wrath is kind of going to be these 10 days. And this might even come into my rapture uh, because I'm, I'm pre-wrath. I think Ben is also pre-wrath. But the rapture happens um, day of the Lord is actually you get pulled up you're raptured, harpoxo, whatever I think we go straight to New Jerusalem which is on its way down we're going to like kind of hide, we'll meet him in the Lord like that's Thessalonians says, you kind of give him a little high five and then you're like okay <laughs> get out of the way, you go do what you got to do Jesus and he pours out those wrath 
So there's kind of like 10 days of destruction and purification. That's what we're supposed to be doing during those 10 days is you're focusing on your sins, focusing on uh, repenting, and, uh, and your high priest is, is going before, before the Holy of Holies, sprinkling blood on the mercy seat, uh, making atonement for all of Israel. A lot of that had to be uh, the earthly priest. You know, he couldn't do any atonement for sin, right? It was, it was, well, voluntary sin. It was all sin, especially everything in regards to Torah and sacrifice. It was always about the sin you didn't know you committed. Kind of an unconscious sin. Uh, or oaths you made when you were drunk or stupid or a lot of things like that, whereas the heavenly high priest, different priest, different order, Hebrews talks all about this, Jesus is able to forgive us of high-handed sin. You know, it's high-handed rebellion, and we've all committed high-handed rebellion. So it's like when we look to the Torah to try to forgive us of these sins, it can't. It's never designed to do that. So. I think Yom Kippur, and it's just a shadow, right? It's a shadow. When Moses saw everything on Mount Sinai, God told him to write it down. It was a shadow. The tabernacle system is a shadow of the heavenly one. So Yom Kippur, as we are familiar with it, is just a glimpse of what Jesus is going to do on that day to fulfill it, to forgive us. And that's also, because it's kind of like this question of, is it, is it rapture? Or is it resurrection? And people debate that, but I think it's both, right? Because obviously there'll be saints that are still alive that think get raptured. And there's going to be resurrection, which happens at the same time if you read in Thessalonians there. I forget where it's all says. It happens at the day of the Lord. Pastors try to dance their way out of that, do a little mental gymnastics to make that happen, and it doesn't work. It is the clear reading of they're happening at the same time. So that's when the glorification of the resurrected saints are. Those who have those who are raptured, maybe that'll be us, maybe that'll be our children that are that are raptured, the saints that are still alive, won't get that glorified body yet. So they're they're still gonna die. They might live a lot longer, you know, because they have access to the tree of life in the in the New Jerusalem, I believe, and or the trees of the garden, which are are life sustaining. So they might live a lot longer. Might have you know, be like Adam, you know, I think about Adam, he would have saw, you know, so his great, 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 great grandchildren probably. Uh, see so many generations. I think it's going to be like that. It's going to be like pre-flood where they live so long. No, rabbit trails. So the final one is final feast. And there's minor feasts like Hanukkah, but those aren't really commanded by scripture. Uh, so we have Sukkot, which is eight days. Eighth day is a celebration day in a lot of people. There's even this Jewish band I saw once in somewhere in Wilkes-Barre. It was random because it was like this Jewish food festival and I want falafel. There was a band called the Eighth Day. So in Judaism, that Eighth Day is this the eternal Sabbath, right? It's a picture of um, what happens after the millennial reign, which is this never-ending you know, Sabbath, if you will. And some of us get a bad idea what Sabbath is. Jews have a terrible idea of what Sabbath is. I just spilled coffee on myself because this road sucks. Um, and when the eternal Sabbath happens, you won't spill coffee on yourself anymore. But it's just like a beautiful picture of, of what life is now, just without coffee spilling on you, on your nice washed pants, and you won't have roads that are bumpy. Um, I still think there'd be a lot of like garden aspects to it because that was God's original plan. It was Adam in the garden. And then it's just going to be like like that, but even better than that. Access to the tree of the garden. We have access to God's presence. Jesus will be reigning as king. There'll be the giant golden city. But I think we'll also be able to go where the nations were. For the millennial reign, I think we're kind of stuck in the ark, if you will. It's like uh, Noah's ark. You know, they stayed there for a long time till the the world was cleansed. Same thing. We're going to stay in this New Jerusalem until the world is cleansed. There'll be people from the nations that weren't saved, but then they weren't, like, sided with the beast either. They weren't sided with the Antichrist. 
This is way off the fig tree stuff. I don't know how I got here. I think it's all related though. He's talking about seeing the leaves are a picture of the day of the Lord. So that's why uh, Sukkot is in Tabernacles. He's coming down to, to dwell with us forever. And that eighth day, you know, forever, you know, eight is what? It's the infinity symbol. Forever. Seventh day is millennium reign. Almost a word here. These roads are terrible. So my question is, like, when Jesus is cursing the fig tree, um, it had leaves on it. I was like, wait a minute, you just said the leaves are, are a good sign. And, and also, it's like a sign that summer is near. And Passover, usually March, you know, it's still a good ways away from summer. So what was his deal? What was his deal with the leaves? Because obviously he was looking to find some food. He didn't see it. Uh, but as we know, figs don't come out. We don't bud. We don't have figs until summer. That's when the fruit comes. You know? The leaves, and then we get the fruit. Um, so there's several different theories. One is that okay, maybe this tree had survived winter. It survived all the hard times and there should still be fruit on it. Or there were these seeds called takish or something that were edible. Some people could eat them, they weren't that great, but they were also a sign that fruit was coming. So you could snack on these things, and like some crunchy, crunchy snacks. And Jesus is like, well, there's no crunchy snacks, which means there's gonna be no fruit. Ben was talking about the fruit of the spirit. So we got these leaves, these, and this, leads into a, a kind of a series I've been working on, very poorly working on, on the Sadducees and how they were righteousness and they wanted to set up the millennial reign on their own through a, a king priest, various different king priests. Um, Janaeus is one, Alexander Janaeus, and then even Herod the Great, a picture of one building the temple and kind of restoring this priesthood and holding on to it. That's what the big, biggest problem with the Sadducees during the time of Jesus. They're too busy holding on to the priesthood. But anyways, I'm at work. There's my thoughts on the fig tree. Um, let me know what you guys think. We could definitely delve deeper.